Wow, this is huge! Hi there! Thanks so much for coming. Play anywhere you want. Adios! Hmm. Hey, maybe we should just play right here. <laughs> George is right. This room is too big. And this is like George's lobby. Too much carpet. <laughs> The food court reminded them of Pischetti's. <laughs> Once again, the lions were too loud. Finally, next to the T-Rex, the band found a perfect spot. Nice! Is it the dinosaur that makes it sound so good? George knew it wasn't the dinosaur. It was the size of the room, no carpet on the floor, and the height of the ceiling. This is a little tune we wrote called Hooray for George. don't really have a place to play. Not since they tore down the bandstand. Oh. Hold it, hold it, hang on. This band is unique. If George is your number one fan, then I'm your number two, which is why I've just decided to build a new bandstand. And I'd like you to perform on opening day. Really? Okay, it's a deal. Thank you, thank you, and welcome to the all-new Glass Bandstand. Please welcome Lobos de Plata. Hit it, George. <laughs> Thanks to the new bandstand, Lobos de Plata sounded great even when Huntley joined in. This looked like where he'd been before. And that was the same clown, which meant... George was back where he started. How did he do that? Why, hello there. I thought you were going to the zoo. <laughs> I see. You must have gotten on the downtown train by mistake. You see, there are two tracks. The track with the up arrow goes uptown to the zoo. And the track with the down arrow goes downtown to Fisherman's Wharf. So, to get to the zoo... 
Up arrow. Precisely. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> Understand? Where's George? I told him to get on the next train. If George didn't get on the uptown train, then maybe could he have gotten on the downtown train by mistake? Because I never explained that there were two trains. That must be it. Oh, hang tight, George. I'm coming. George, hold on! Stay on the train and go to the zoo! Uh -huh. I know it's a giraffe. It's the only thing I know how to make. Your attention, please. Due to mechanical difficulties, there will be a one hour delay on the uptown line. One hour? Oh, that's it, subway's out, running's in. See you, Reginald. Cheerio! George loved riding on the subway, but he also couldn't wait to see a dragon? Not only did George see a dragon on his way to the zoo, he also saw an Italian opera singer, some Russian dancers, and a Swiss yodel. had arrived at the zoo. Oh, no. <gasps> George! <gasps> you made it, George, all by yourself. And faster than I did. Now, let's hurry and get over to the zoo, because I think they... Close at 4 p.m. Sorry. Oh, but it took us all day to get here, and, and we really wanted to see the Komodo dragon. Isn't there anything you can do? <laughs> well, nothing wrong with a monkey in a zoo, I suppose. Thank you. <laughs> so why did it take you all day to get here? It's a long story. Ah, well, little advice. Next time, take the subway. It's faster. <laughs> So, how wide do you want this poster? One, two, or three Georges wide? Not only were things the right size for George, he was the size. Okay, let me see. This is some, um, uh, this is some um, one George, and uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. this is, uh, this is two Georges, and uh, of course, uh, this is, um, this is our uh, three Georges wide. George knew it would be easier to handle a poster that wasn't wider than he was. Great! How are we going to nail this to be three Georges tall if you forgot the George stick? We don't need a stick. There's George. One George. <laughs> Two Georges. <laughs> Three Georges. There, three Georges tall. Thanks, George. <laughs> Pick a cake and the cake. You know, a one George arm size is perfect for the average freezer. 
cake, decorations. It was all so easy with George measurements. cake was in the freezer, the poster was on the wall, and the star was no trouble at all. George was ready for his guests. <laughs> Hello, Giorgio. But not ready for their size. I hope we're not too early. I see you've got a two George's tall apartment and furniture to match. Very unique. Hey, 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 he's coming! <laughs> George is right. We have to hide. Hi, everybody. Surprise! A party? For me? Oh, gee, th thanks. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, me too. Uh, 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 how about some music? A George-sized apartment was fine for little monkeys, but not at all good for people-sized people. Ah! <laughs> This was more like it. Everything was the size it should be. Except maybe the cake. Six o'clock. Only an hour left. And George had to start over. George wanted to get the sizes right, so he decided to measure everything first. This time, George ordered the right-sized cake. And poster. And chose a better ladder. George, are you home? What is this? To celebrate my birthday? Oh, wow. All my friends and my plumber, my dentist, my barber? They were in your address book. George put everything together. Uh. He did? Oh, thank you, George. Maybe it wasn't so bad oh. being a little monkey in a big <laughs> world after all. And there was one thing his arms were always the right size for. George couldn't wait to get his cart back. Hey, George! <laughs> Like my cart, Allie traded it to me for an old backpack. <laughs> you want to trade that pony for the cart? <laughs> mm, no thanks. I need this to help me carry stuff to the swap meet. <laughs> a swap meet is where lots of people gather in a big space and trade stuff. You should come, it's fun. Who knows? You might find something I would swap the cart for. Huh. Annual swap meet tomorrow only. One person's junk is another person's treasure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is great, George. I'll bring all the stuff I want to get rid of. <laughs> oh, no, no, that's the keep pile. That's the get rid of pile. <laughs> Of course. You never know when you might need a sombrero. <laughs> the next day, George hoped that between his sticks and the man's stuff, they'd have something that Bill would trade for. Hmm, got it. Need it. Uh, I like her sombrero, though. Oh! <laughs> you want to trade the sombrero? Sure. 
<laughs> you want the cart? Uh-huh. It's a deal. Oh, wait. I just traded it to Mr. Quint. <laughs> Don't worry. Maybe you can make a trade with Mr. Quint. That's a dandy fish and reel, but unfortunately, I just swapped the cart with my brother for this singing whale. Forty-nine tons of krill on the wall. Forty-nine tons of krill. No! George found Mr. Quint's brother Flint, but Flint had traded the cart to his other brother Wint for a back massager. Wint had traded the cart to Mrs. Rankins for some soap on a rope. Ah. And Mrs. Rankins had traded the cart to Vicky. <laughs> Sorry, George. I just traded the cart to some people from the city. George had worked so hard to get that cart back, and now it was gone for good. There's nothing here that I want. See, I'm an artist. I work with wood, and what I'm looking for are unusual sticks. <laughs> well, these are the best sticks I've ever seen. Thank you. <laughs> At last, George had a cart. Of course, he no longer had anything to put in it, but that wouldn't last long. We should use the wagon wheels? Race, maybe your wheels shouldn't run off without you. George needed a way to keep the two car parts together. <laughs> he knew just how to do it. First, he put the steering handle through the hole in the bottom of the boat. Then he nailed the boat to the wagon. We did it! The car was almost ready. Okay, we've got one, two, and three. But we still need... Hey, kids. Aren't you entering the derby race? It starts in 10 minutes. Oh, no. But we're missing a car part, and we don't know where to find it. Well, I'd offer to help you, but, um... We know, we know. No help allowed. Well, if you see anything you need, you're welcome to it. Thanks, Grandpa. <laughs> Whoa! I forgot to put on the brake! <laughs> George and Allie had their break. Well, it looks okay. We can test it on the way to the race. <laughs>
Ah, the racer's ready. On your mark. Get set. <laughs> it works! <laughs> hey, guys! You made it! <laughs> Go! My wagon! Oh, go, George! That's my buggy! For a while, George and Bill were neck and neck. Come on! Faster! Meet the winner, Farmer Rinkin's Wagon. It was a rather unusual entry, but it met all the rules. <laughs> also, otters could hold their breath for a long, long, long time. Okay, swimming was out. But George had a lot of other tricks up his furry sleeve. Otters might be fast in the water, but monkeys were fast on land. George just had to get the otter out of the water. But how? What did otters like? They liked to play. They like to swim. <gasps> they liked keys. But why did they like keys? It's not like otters could drive a boat. <laughs> Maybe they just liked keys because they were shiny. George had the beginnings of a brilliant monkey plan. If otters liked shiny things, then maybe he'd follow the fish to land and George could get his key. He did like shiny things. This was working better than George had hoped. But the otter was pretty fast on land, too. And now he had George's fish fob. Not only were otters fast in water and on land, but they had really great hiding places. And then, George remembered. He must live around here. They usually have homes called dens along the shore. Maybe that was the otter's home. <laughs> oh no, the otter was underground and George was out of shiny things to lure him out. His only chance of getting that key was to find something else the otter might want. <laughs> and 
then he remembered. Otters like to play. They play peekaboo, hide and seek, keep away and chase. Maybe otters would play Traja. <laughs> the trick to Traja was to make your toy look a gajillion trillion times more fun than anyone else's toy. And George was an expert at that. It was by far the most amazing toy the otter had ever seen. The otter hated to give up his shiny key. But the ball was more fun. Oh, wait till you see the pictures I took. I got a rose-breasted grosbeak, a pie-billed grebe, and a coot. You ready to go home? Ah, Mr. Quint's key. You kept it safe, George. <laughs> the otter loved both his new toys. And he didn't miss the key at all. Especially since his dad had four just like it. Good thing George got some leaves from the tree. But Hundley Jr. didn't like the tree leaves. He only liked the leaves from the flowers. Hundley understood. He only liked one kind of dog food. He and Hundley Jr. were exactly alike. And then something strange happened. Hundley Jr. dangled down off a stick and stopped moving. Maybe Hundley Jr. needed more food. Hundley had to get more leaves from the flowers fast. When Hundley got to the lobby, he couldn't believe his eyes. Nothing was wrong. George couldn't believe his eyes either. Hundley was dirty and smelled like trash. Hundley needed that food, but George didn't want a dirty dog in his clean lobby. It was Hundley versus Monkey Hundley. Who would win? Oh, my flowers. Ms. Klopotsnik, that's who. Aren't they? Oh dear, there's milkweed in this bouquet. I'm allergic to milkweed. Well, at least the lobby smelled better now. When Hundley got back, Hundley Jr. was in a tiny sleeping bag. Where did he get that? Hundley would just wait until his friend woke up. He was sure it wouldn't be long. Ah! Oh, okay. There's trash all over the floor. George is in the lobby, and you're watching a stick? I'm taking your temperature, Hundley. Days and days went by. But Hundley Jr. stayed wrapped up in the hard little bag. Hundley tried to get Hundley Jr. to come out and play. Nope. Hundley tried to get Hundley Jr. to come out and sing. Nope. Meanwhile, George kept watching the lobby in the mornings while the doorman was at his class. He did a good job. Most of the time. Two weeks later, the doorman was back to work in the morning. Bye, George. But Hundley Jr. was still sleeping. George knew how to wake him up. <laughs> It looked like their friend would sleep forever. But then, the sleeping bag opened. And out came... a butterfly? Where did Huntley Jr. go? It was empty. But that must mean... the butterfly...
butterfly was Hundley Jr. No wonder he'd been so sleepy. It took a lot of work to grow wings. Their little friend had grown up. Puppies turned into dogs, baby monkeys turned into bigger monkeys, and caterpillars turned into butterflies. Hundley was happy his friend was awake. But he was a little sad too, because Hundley Jr. didn't want to live inside anymore. It was a beautiful day. A perfect day for flying. They'd miss their friend, but he was ready to leave and go see the world. Thanks to them. Hundley was proud. He'd been a great caterpillar daddy. Hey, lobby monkey! But he'd also learned his job could be done by a monkey. Hundley still did it better, though. <laughs> Hi, we're looking for our dog. Uh, hang on just one second, please. <clears throat> nope. Still a monkey. And a fireman. Together. How can I help you? My dog is here. You, you just brought him in. Ah, come on back. Oh, hey, Pookie Wookie. I was worried about you. Yes, I was. Oh, he's very playful. He made a lot of friends already. Even the gerbil likes him. Animal shelters have gerbils? Oh, we take them all. From A to Z, armadillos to zebras. We've never had a zebra, actually, but we'd take it. I have got to stop Blaze from running away. Can you help me? You should use a leash and a collar. And you need a dog tag with the dog and owner's name, address, and phone number on it. You can make one at the pet supply store right down the road. Mm. Thanks. There you go, buddy. A brand new dog tag. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Looks like Blaze found the toy section. If Blaze keeps running away, we're gonna need a new fire dog. Or a new proby to watch the fire dog a little better. Don't worry, we got Blaze a dog tag and a leash, and I'll train him to stay. He'll never get out again, I promise. Sounds good, Sam. But right now, it's time for your training. You've got a big test tomorrow. Great, let's go. It had been a long day of dog chasing, but now George could finally relax. Was that Blaze? Nah, couldn't be. Blaze! Ah! George couldn't believe it. Blaze was more trouble than a monkey. Ah! He's too fast, and we're too tired. <gasps> I see you got a nice new dog tag for Blaze. And he tested it out by getting lost again right away. He found a hole in the fence this time. He's super sneaky and super cute. <laughs> oh, you want to go see your friend? Blaze came to play with the other dog, and he wanted to play with Charky in the park and play ball with George. George suddenly knew why Blaze kept leaving. George figured out how to stop Blaze from running away by getting another dog. Meet Sparky. Great, now we can lose two dogs. The shelter worker says some dogs do better with a friend. Now, let's go take that firefighter test. I'm ready, and the dogs will both be here when we're done. Right, George? That's right.
right. Oh, you did it. You finished the obstacle course in less than two minutes. Oh, yeah. Oh, 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 hang on. You still have to pass the real test. That's right. We have to check and see if the dogs are still here. <gasps> oh, no. Blaze and Sparky are gone. Oh, no. They could be miles away by now. I'm sorry, guys. It was sure nice working with you. <sighs> What? <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Congratulations, Proby Sam. And now you're Firefighter Sam. All right! Can't breathe. I'm good. <laughs> okay, you build the basics. I'll design the bling. You know, cool stuff so bees will show up quicker. George needed five different parts. A lid, a shallow box, some frames, a grid, and a deeper box. Trouble was, Betsy would be home from dance class in two hours. He didn't have time to make boxes from scratch. Oops, broke my lead. Hey, George, do you have a pencil sharpener? <laughs> and then George realized he didn't need to build boxes. The apartment was full of them. Yeah. <laughs> they were called drawers. <laughs> now to put everything together. You don't have a bunch of drawers that fit together. Ah. Maybe I should make a model of the beehive. Do you have any scissors? Uh -huh. ah. He did have drawers that fit together. And they came with their own lid. Ah. Kitchen cabinets were practically a one-stop shopping spot for beehive parts. George, what do we use for frames? That was a good question. <gasps> and George had a good answer. They didn't call them frames for nothing. George was just missing one part. Not for long. Fantastic! Now let's put in my improvements. Indoor swimming pool, bowling alley, game room, moon bounce, golf course, movie theater. Oh no, you're right, it's late. Let's drop this at Aunt Margaret's. Then we better work extra hard to drum up bees. Okay, George. So, uh, how do we drum up bees? Betsy said bees go from flower to flower. Maybe if their hive had flowers, the bees would move in. Come on, bees. Betsy will be here any mi- ah! Betsy, you're- <laughs> Is this what I think it is? Wait, Betsy, I can explain. See, you said have a taste, so we- <laughs> uh, Just the tiniest slice. And it was yum, and then- Where'd it go? So we tried to buy you more, but everyone was out, so we built you a hive instead. You guys, you've done a lot of things, but this, this is absolutely, by far, the best present you've ever given me. It is? Uh -huh. But we ate your honeycomb. Yeah. What? Oh, no. That piece of honeycomb was for you. I've got 
lots more. What? Mm -hmm. Oh, show me how this works. I want to use it in my Earth Day presentation. Sure. Betsy had a hive. Steve and George had more honeycomb. Everyone was happy. Well, almost everyone. No. <laughs> oh. No. Oh. Have fun. George was going to make sure that this time Sammy and Susie couldn't escape. Wrong again. But how were they getting out? It was a mystery. the goats couldn't escape from his room, unless they learned how to fly. George. No, no major damage. They sort of ate my easy chair. Well, they say goats have cast iron stomachs. I guess they can eat anything. Yeah, maybe that'd be best. I'll send them over. Bye-bye. <laughs> uh, you two better take the goats back home. I think your grandpa might be planning to give them away. <gasps> oh, it's too bad Grandpa's giving the goats away just because they eat stuff. Nobody's perfect. <laughs> I mean, look at Ulysses. He's stubborn. But Grandpa's not giving him away. Uh -huh. Allie was right. Ulysses was stubborn, but he was also useful. Sammy and Susie would be useful once they could give milk. If only there were a way they could be useful now. Hey, help Susie! <laughs> Sammy! Careful, George! Poison ivy! Poison ivy? And the goats were eating it. Would they get a rash in their bellies? Well, they say goats have cast iron stomachs. I guess they can eat anything. Uh -huh. George might have found a way for the kids to be useful. <laughs> oh, hi, George. Say, where are Allie and the goats? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Grandpa, look at Sammy and Susie. Well, I'll be. They're clearing my field. George figured out a way for them to be useful like Ulysses. They can eat poison ivy. They rip it right out by the roots. What do you know? Hey, I can plow this field now. I could plant alfalfa or, or, or bean sprouts. Rutabagas. Mm. <laughs> Thanks, Sammy. You too, Susie. Hey, Rankins. Is that goat eating your poison ivy? She sure is. They love it. They're clearing Grandpa's field for him. 
I got some poison ivy needs clearing out, too. Can I borrow them? Uh-huh. You bet, mister. And that's how George and Allie's lawn service was born. Best of all, George and Allie's lawnmowers didn't need gas. <laughs>